Good evening, welcome to Jazz Vespers, whether you're here in person or whether you're in line, online, in line. That was breaking bread together. We appreciate your being here. We'll play music that I'm sure you'll recognize just about every tune um, over the next uh, hour or so. If you would join me for our call to worship, follow the script that's on the, on the uh, screens here or your screen at home. I'll do the leader part if you'll respond with the people part. Let us worship God who has done great things. Let us worship God who has caused streams of mercy to flow in the wasteland. Let us worship God in spirit and in truth. We rejoice. And we rejoice that several weeks ago in his sermon, Pastor Ross talked about one of his favorite hymns, This Is My Father's World, and he talked about thinking of that as he was then living in Niagara Falls, actually not in the falls, near the falls. I've always intended to ask him if he's ever gone over the falls in a barrel. But This Is My Father's World was written by a guy named Maltby Babcock, who was an outdoorsman. He, lo he was a hunter. He loved to uh, walk through the woods, enjoying the world that God has blessed us with. And it's the final stanza of this that speaks to me. In it, Babcock kind of shifts the focus from the visual beauty of nature to the reality that all isn't right with the world. With a strong sense of Presbyterian providence, Babcock says that though the wrong seems off so strong, God is the ruler yet. This coupling, this closing couplet poses and answers the question that gives us hope. Why should my heart be sad? God reigns, let the earth be glad. This is my father's world. Thank 
Whenever we start the Lenten season, I always think that the song of Lent, the song of Jesus' suffering, should be nobody knows the trouble I've seen. It just seems like that African-American spiritual, which speaks so much to me and of the plight of African-Americans, also speaks to me of what Jesus must have felt how he felt in the Garden of Gethsemane as he approached the trial, as he knew what was coming, and the ine inevitable cross. And, you know, today, some people in the world also feel that way because there's been a lot of trouble and a lot of turmoil in the world. And yet we know as Christians that we must have confidence in God. God is in control. And, and God has his own plan to reshape the world and in the long run turn evil into good. We, we move forward with that confidence in God as we still sing in Lent, nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Thank you. 
And now, if you'll join me on our prayer of intercession, God of love, hear the cry of those who yearn for love, fractured families, those with broken homes, neglected, unwanted, alone, God of love, God of justice, hear the cry of those who yearn for justice, persecuted and oppressed, exploited, ill-treated, broken, God of justice, God of peace, hear the cry of those who yearn for peace in battle zones and broken states, frightened, fearful, anxious, God of peace, God of healing, hear the cry of those who yearn for healing, physical and spiritual, hurting, weakened, depressed, God of healing, God of mercy, hear the cry of those who yearn for mercy. Convicted, in need of your grace, contrite, humble, bowed down, God of mercy, hear our prayer. The next tune is a jazz setting of 1 Peter 5. We all know the scripture. It's the words to a fellow elder, a to be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care, watching over them not because you must, but because you are willing, as God wants you to be, not pursuing dishonest gain, but eager to serve, not lording it over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. In his first sacred concert, Duke Ellington wrote on this subject an E minor blues. He entitled it, The Shepherd Who Watches Over His Flock. It was in honor of a Lutheran pastor named John Garcia Gensel, who ministered to the jazz community in New York City. John Gensel had such an impact that in 1994, a tribute concert honoring his life achievements was held in Carnegie Hall. 
was hosted by Bill Cosby and many of the jazz musicians based in New York played, including Duke. On September 12, 1999, St. Peter's Jazz Vespers introduced a new African-American worship book in the spirit of Gensel dedicated to him. And in 2000, Stony Point Center established the John Garcia Gensel Award for Integrating Faith in the Arts. The first award was given that year to jazz artist Dave Brubeck. We all have flocks to tend in our families, in our work, in our communities, here in our church. This tune is called T Tending to the Flock is a reminder that God expects us to tend them humbly and well.
November 7 in 2016, the New York Times carried an article saying that archaeologists in Maryland had discovered an intact set of objects that they interpreted as being religious symbols, a combination of traditional ones from Africa mixed with what they believed to be a biblical image, a representation of Ezekiel's wheel. So this Ezekiel's wheel has always been one of these Bible stories that's hard to understand, features of a vision of four wheels that, that more or less illustrate the spiritual divine essence of God and that God is omnipresent with us. It's found the stories from the first chapter of Ezekiel and, and it goes on, the book of Ezekiel goes on and to further expand on that. Uh, there's a chariot, it's drawn by four living creatures, each has four faces, those a man's face, a lion's face, an ox and an eagle, four wings, each living creature is a wheel within a wheel and it's tall and aw awesome, full of eyes all around. And God appoints Ezekiel as a prophet, as a watchman in Israel, and sends Ezekiel as one of the first missionaries to the Israelites. The African-American spiritual derived from that, that many of us have sung in school and like growing up, Ezekiel saw the wheel way up in the middle of the air. Ezekiel saw the wheel way up in the middle of the air the little wheel run by faith and the big wheel run by the grace of God, a wheel in a wheel way up in the middle of the air. This is our interpretation of Ezekiel's wheel.
I put this Lenten litany in here to remind us of the season that we're in as we prepare for Holy Week and Easter. So join me, please, on this Lenten litany. Let us pray, because temptation is woven into the fabric of our lives, and we know the weariness of 40 days in the desert and the vain promises of the world. We need you, God. We need you, God. Because we see the broken before the whole and the half-empty cup and the unfinished task and the thirst in freedom, we need you, God. Because we trust in what we can see and we are blinded by our prejudices and we do not know what we do not know, we need you, God. Because our need for correctness exceeds our need for truth and our excuses preempt the cry of the wounded, we need you, God. Because you came among us and breathed into our sinewy souls and healed our pain and let us wound you and tr triumphed over all our hatred, we need you, God. And now the next song is one of, I would argue, the three most famous American songs known around the world. You know, if you go to any country in the world, people know happy birthday. They know how to sing it. Uh, I'll never forget, many years ago, I had an Iranian guy who, who was um, a drafts person. I said, how do you sing happy birthday in Iran? He said, well, happy birthday, just like you do. And Jingle Bells is probably one of the top three as well. Everybody knows Jingle Bells. And this third one, Jesus Loves Me, also, this was written by two sisters who lived on, in Constitution Island near West Point, and they taught Sunday school at West Point. They wrote, or they wrote this, Jesus Loves Me, as part of a book that one of the two sisters had written. But I have to believe that as they taught Sunday school at West Point to the soldiers there in the 1860s, that they also taught this to those soldiers as well. Simple prayer sums up our faith. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. And just to mix things up, we're going to do it Samba style.
The next song we got out of the secular world, it's kind of a secular counterpart to Take My Life and Let It Be. You know, the Francis Hadley Havergal uh, song, Take My Life, Let It Be Consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands, let them move at the impulse of thy love. Take my feet, let them be swift and beautiful for thee. Take my voice, let me sing always only for my king. Take my lips, let them be filled with messages from thee. You know the song, I don't need to keep going. You can probably recite those words before I speak them. So instead, we're going to play this song, All of Me, Why Not Take All of Me? Can't you see, God, I'm no good without you.
we have a short prayer. I love the Lord, for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy, because he has turned his ear to me. I will call on God as long as I live. Sorry. Let us turn to those to the left and the right of us and say, May you, know May you know the love of God. May you know the hearing, hearing mercy of God. I'm sorry I messed that one up. That's the healing mercy. That's forgiveness. So the next song we're going to do is called Life is a Catwalk. It's a pathway to, to God. There are three scriptures I could find that talk about pathways to God. In Psalm 25, show me your ways, O Lord, teach me your paths, guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are my God and Savior, my hope is in you all day long. Moving to the book of John, chapter 14, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And then Proverbs is rather scary, which leads us to the song here. It says, stern discipline awaits him who leaves the path. He who hates correction will die. I don't, I haven't, heard preachers preach on that verse very often. Maybe this would be a challenge for Ross to squeeze that in the future sermon. So this next tune titled Life is a Catwalk is all about that narrow walkway it, or open bridge. It's just in, you know, a catwalks in industrial installations on a ship or backstage in a theater. It's used to provide access to high places, and it's often narrow, often dangerous, and, but it is the path to success, and it is the path to heaven. So we're going to close tonight's Jazz Vesters with two tunes talking about paths. The first one is Life is a Catwalk to Heaven, and the second one, After the Benediction, so we'll have a benediction between is titled, Don't Take the B-Train to Heaven. Here is the first one.
I hope you heard that very frantic bar in there. It happens a couple times. We stuck it. That's when you're on the catwalk and you think you're going to fall off. And we're going, boo, 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 boo. Yeah. Play as many notes as we can in that one bar. I should introduce everybody. There's a bunch of good looking young guys up here. Starting first, over on the end, is Ido Meshulam on the trombone. Jeff Kay on the trumpet. Jim Youngstrom on the alto sax and tenor sax. Dave Marks on the trombone, I mean on the drums. <laughs> and Nick Morbido on the bass. And, and we, you couldn't see us or hear us without our tech crew that Jay has put together and does it so well every time. You can see their names up there on the, on the screen. There's Jay is our tech manager. We have Clint Federson, who's a tech director. John, Kent, uh, John Rohr, who spent hours planning the camera shots, making sure that, that we can be seen. And uh, Rich Meyer's running the, the media back there. And Jay, in addition to being the tech manager, putting it, managing all of this, he also runs a camera at the same time. And, um, and the soundboard with his other hand. <laughs> if you like Jazz Vespers or would like this to continue, would like to support us, we have some offering plates in, out in the narthex. We appreciate your generosity, your donations as you leave. Um, and if you're online, we please send them into the church, mark them for Jazz Vespers, and they'll go to the right account. We, we appreciate your generosity. And the next Jazz Vespers will be April 21. So put that on your calendar, please. That's the next time. And let's close with a Lenten benediction before we play to get to heaven, don't take the B train. The benediction, may we find the road that leads to life. May we pause to accompany others on the way. And long for the horizon and dawn and grace. Amen.
Thank you.